Welcome to Now in Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. In this edition, we'll cover the return of Google I.O., Android Studio turning 10, the Android 16 betas, widgets, Imagine and Firebase, the latest in Android X, and more. Well, first up, mark your calendars. Google I.O. is officially returning on May 20th and 21st. Get ready for two days packed with the latest from Google across Android, AI, Web Cloud, and everything in between. The Android 16 beta releases are here. Beta 3 brings platform stability, which means you can publish apps targeting API 36 to Google Play. Apps that target Android 16 are required to be resizable on large screens. It also adds the progress style notification template for live updates to help users monitor ongoing activities. Android 16 has enhancements to media quality, including the advanced professional video format, precise color temperature and tint adjustments, hybrid auto exposure, camera night mode scene detection, and ultra HDR with HEIC support. 16 brings new APIs for custom graphical effects like runtime color filter and runtime transfer mode powered by AGSL. It has important accessibility updates, including a new API for supplemental descriptions. Several behavior changes are introduced in Android 16, including updates to art internals, predictive back animations, fixed rate work scheduling optimization, ordered broadcast priority scope, edge to edge enforcement, health and fitness permissions, and intent redirect protections. Android 16 introduces major and minor API releases to allow us to drive faster innovation. Only the Q2 major release cycle we're on now includes app impacting planned behavior changes, so make sure to test your app against Android 16. Vertex AI in Firebase, which became generally available last October, is a production-ready solution to allow you to leverage the power of generative AI in your apps. It gives you access to Google's Gemini Cloud models, such as Gemini 2.0 Flash and Gemini 1.5 Pro. Imagine 3, Google's advanced image generation model, is now in public preview in Firebase for Android. The Imagine blog covers how you can use the Firebase SDK for Android to integrate Imagine 3, customize generation, and create engaging user experiences with AI-powered visuals. The Production Ready blog covers important tips for a successful deployment to production, such as implementing Firebase App Check to help protect backend resources from abuse, using Firebase Remote Config for server-controlled configuration of your AI models, gathering user feedback with tools such as Google Analytics to evaluate the impact of your AI features. Remember to be transparent with your users about their engagement with generative AI and provide them with control over how their activity related to AI model interactions is stored. We dove deep into widgets with a spotlight week covering how to create high quality widgets that boost user engagement and improve your app's discoverability. We announced that Google Play is improving widget discovery, including new widget badges, a new search filter specifically for apps with high quality widgets, and a curated widgets editorial page, covered how Android widgets are a game changer for your app and its users, gave guidance on how to design great widgets with Figma and canonical layouts, explored developing best practice widgets with Glance, and ended the week with your questions answered in a hashtag Ask Android session. Google Play is introducing a verified badge for consumer-facing VPN apps that meet specific criteria, including completing the Mobile Application Security Assessment Level 2 validation. Once awarded, the badge is prominently displayed on your app's detail page and in search results as proof that your VPN app invests in app safety. In collaboration with Samsung, Wear OS is introducing Galaxy Watch for Kids, a new experience enabling kids to stay connected with their families from their smartwatch, no phone necessary. The kids' experience includes support for calling, texting, games, and more, with parent-managed contacts and app controls via Google Family Link. It unlocks new opportunities for Wear OS developers to reach younger audiences. The new Trusted Time API leverages Google's secure infrastructure to provide a trustworthy timestamp that is independent of a device's potentially manipulated local time settings. Built on Google Play services, it is available on devices running Android 5 Lollipop and above. Key benefits include preventing data inconsistency, closing security gaps in time-based measures, ensuring reliable scheduling, and providing more accurate time compared to the device's internal clock. The Android test libraries, Core Espresso, Espresso Device, JUnit, Truth Monitor, Runner, and Rules now require a min SDK version of 21 instead of 19. 
There are a few other changes, such as Espresso device updating width size class and height size class to use Android X window size classes. Where ongoing in Interactions version 1.1 is released, bringing a crucial bug fix that prevents a runtime exception for apps running on Wear OS 5 Plus and targeting API level 35 or higher. Browser 1.9 Alpha 1 is released, including color scheme param support, experimental ephemeral browsing for custom tabs, a new service intent filter category to support multi-network, and more. TV Material 1.1 includes changes to the way focus is handled, along with fixes for broken focus management in Carousel, fixes to jittery text while scaling, and more. So, that's it for this edition with the Google I.O. announcement, the 10th anniversary of Android Studio, the Android 16 betas, the widget spotlight week, production ready, generative AI, including the Imagine preview in Firebase, kids apps on Wear OS, trusted VPNs in Play, trusted time, the latest in Android X, and more. So check back soon for your latest update from the Android developer universe.